welcome back to the wellness check as you can see i have my little emotional support partner here with me this is sadie may and she comes with me to the office sometimes um, to keep my clients company so today we are talking about positive versus negative coping skills and this might seem like a psychology 101 type of conversation but i think it's something that needs to be reiterated from time to time just as a good reminder so let's start with why we use coping skills how we do them even without thinking about it all day every day most of us lead pretty stressful lives we are busy we are rushing from one place to the other there's a lot going on always we live a very stressful life and through that, we have to cope and manage. Rather, our nervous system has to cope and manage with that high amount of stress, um, an anticipated change in plans, you name it, we get stressed. And whether we know it consciously or not, our nervous system has to deal with that. For, for those that are more flexible and can kind of go with the flow and that doesn't really bother you, that's great. And for those that have more rigidity in their day, more structure in their day, they really thrive on um, how the day is going to pan out and then it doesn't pan out that way, it can be overwhelming, right? We can get anxious, we can get irritable, and all of that requires us to try and bring that nervous system activity down. So that's what coping skills are, right? In therapy, we learn how to bring that stress and how to bring those triggers into our awareness so that we're really conscious of why we feel this way, why we're responding to the world the way we do that day. Um, what are the things, the undercurrents is what I call it, underneath that are that's percolating up to make us feel stressed. Once we bring that into our awareness, then we have the ability to make a maybe more conscious, more developed thought about how we want to manage it. So this is where it comes into negative and, negative and positive coping skills. There are millions of coping skills. Sometimes it's as easy as just taking a really big breath. We do that, I see people do that all the time. We don't even know we're doing it. It's our body's way of regulating. And that's one thing I love about the magic of our bodies is that we're, without even bringing it to our attention or thinking about it, um, doing things to self-soothe. Now, if these are positive, healthy, adaptive things, then that's great. But unfortunately, many of us are not doing all of the most amazing, beneficial things to cope. And that's where it turns into the negative coping skills. So let's just kind of start there first. Negative coping skills. I'm going to tell you why they make us feel better, even though on paper, logically, rationally, we know that they're not the healthiest. When it comes to negative coping skills, they tend to be impulsive. They tend to be very fast acting and make you feel better very quickly, right? And that's what we're seeking. If we are in the midst of discomfort, um, irritability, anger, overwhelm, feeling flooded, we want to feel better immediately. Our nervous system and our brain want to find the easiest route in order to help us feel better. So if it comes up with an idea that suggests, hey, you can do this thing and it'll make you feel better immediately, if we don't put forethought into that and really give ourselves a chance to think about that, then we're gonna do it. We're gonna do that negative thing impulsively and maybe in the moment it'll make us feel better. So what are some examples of typical or more common negative coping skills? Well. Um, I guess it depends on the emotion and what the person is going through, but typical things could be um, self-sabotage. Sometimes we know we're doing it. Sometimes we don't even know we're doing it. Sometimes it's negative critical self-talk, saying negative, mean, nasty things to yourself about yourself. Maybe it's minimizing um, a dangerous situation or relationship that you are in just to make you feel better so that you don't have to make a big decision to leave the relationship. If we minimize it, if we avoid it, maybe it'll be okay. Maybe I'll be okay. Um, anything that has to do with substance use, so alcohol use, 
um, drug use, recreational or over the counter or prescribed, um, any type of self harm. These are more of the extreme examples, but these are things that come into my office quite often. These things on paper, like in the minute, work. Okay, so bear with me. I'm not condoning these behaviors, but what I'm saying is that's why a lot of us are drawn to these types of coping skills is because in the moment they actually self-soothe. That's why addiction exists. That's why we self-soothe through the practice of eating disorder behaviors. That's why we ruin relationships or stay in dangerous relationships. That's why we um, lash out at people with our mean, cruel words. There's so many things that we can do. I can't even list them all right now that we do to cope and manage and to bring our nervous system to a more balanced place in the moment when we're feeling discomfort. Now, as you can imagine with these examples, you can see that they are not the healthiest and they might get the job done temporarily, but they're going to cause more damage long-term, maybe not only to yourself, but to the people around you too. So that's the lure of um, negative coping skills. We can technically say that made me feel better to do that. Then we can say, man, I actually feel terrible that I did that. I need to go apologize to that person or I um, have to start over on my days of sobriety, whatever it is. Now, when it comes to positive coping skills, I get a lot of flack. I get a lot of resistance. And you'd think, Katie, why would you be getting resistance to teaching people how to do, use positive coping skills? Here's why. Positive coping skills, or at least the utilization of positive coping skills, requires a lot of awareness. And when people are uncomfortable or distraught, they don't want to bring in more awareness. That instinct is to just push away. Push away, avoid, minimize, pretend it's not there, deny, deny. So the first act of being able to step into a positive coping skill is to be more aware. What? It does take practice. Um, and I will tell you that it is worth it. If we can learn to lean into the discomfort of whatever it is we are feeling in that moment, then the more we have, uh, the more bandwidth we have to become curious about it. Curiosity is a really important thing when it comes to tuning into our feelings and our response systems. Without it, we act irrationally and impulsively. So here we are redirecting. First, we, le we lean in, we become curious, we bring awareness to why we feel the way we do. Something as simple as saying, why do I feel the way I feel? What happened? What just happened today? What happened last week? How have I been feeling the past month? Let's really dig into this and figure out why you feel the way you do. In videos past, you've heard me say, emotions and feelings are never the problem. It's what we do or don't do with our feelings that tends to be the most problematic. Let that sink in. The act of learning how to feel your feelings and work through them in a progressive, productive way is 75% of the battle. And you'd be surprised how many people struggle doing this. It just feels overwhelming and intolerable. So that's a huge piece of what therapy does. Now, the second challenge that comes with the utilization of positive coping skills is they tend to be they, they tend to require a little bit more work whereas the impulse of going to do something potentially destructive is easy quick it makes you feel better quickly positive coping skills not only require curiosity and awareness but the practice of doing something kind and compassionate to yourself when you don't feel good and that's a really really hard idea to wrap your mind around, especially if you don't particularly like yourself all that much. For individuals that have um, struggles with self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth, when they feel bad, the inclination is not to treat themselves nicely. It's not to be compassionate and to take time and work through things productively. It's to sabotage, it's to self-harm, it's to wreck the situation around themselves because that more so corroborates with their self-belief. Okay, this is a little segue into where is your self-esteem right now? 
In addition, though, um, in general, even if someone isn't struggling with those types of issues, it takes more forethought. And one thing that I try to help people understand is as an example, this is just an example, if we're trying to break someone's negative coping skill and turn it into a positive coping skill, this is how I break it down. Let's say a person's inclination to cope in a negative way is to um, break their cell phone. They have an issue with like slamming their cell phone into walls or on the ground and they just break their cell phone. And in the minute, in the moment, it feels good, right? It does, it feels good when you're angry to be able to kind of break something. But in this situation, that's a very costly way of coping. Phones cost a lot of money. Um, nobody can reach you in the time that your phone is broken. It's not productive and it's not helpful in the short term or the long term. So we're trying to break this person's um, instinct, I guess, or, or ability to say, hey, this is the way I need to do it. I need to get physical. So if we're, if we're going over there, I'm gonna stay over here for a minute. I asked the person, how good does it feel in the moment to break that phone, to just smash it against the ground? And if I say zero out of 10, zero means it doesn't feel good at all. 10 means it's the best thing in the world. I never want to give it up. And this person says, oh, it's like a seven or eight. I don't really want to give it up, but I can understand why I need to. Then what I think is, okay, pivoting over into the positive coping skills, we have to get something that feels like an eight or above. Because if throwing the phone down and, break, and breaking it in that moment feels as good as a seven or eight, and then we're gonna to switch to a positive coping skill that feels as good as a four or five, there's not gonna be any buy-in for that. It's not gonna feel as good. The ability to break that habit and switch over is gonna be very difficult. So we, try, we strategize, we go into solution focus mode of what can we do over here in the positive side to equal um, or add up to an eight or a nine, at least the same amount or more. Because if we're able to then utilize those positive coping skills and it feels just as good in the moment or better, and it's healthy and conducive to healing and fixing the, the, the issue at hand, then we're way more likely to follow through on that, not only with our impulse, but with our patterns of behavior. And that's how we break those poor habits. Truth be told, sometimes it takes two or three positive coping skills to be able to break the habit of using the negative coping skill because that negative coping skill can just feel so good in the moment. Sometimes we have to do two or three things. So instead of slamming the phone down and breaking it, maybe we need to not only do deep breaths, but we need to phone a friend, we need to go for a walk, we need to um, maybe go to an ax throwing place where that's socially appropriate to break something and everyone is safe and no one's gonna be hurt, right? There's so many ideas, but maybe you have to do a couple of them in order to get to that same relief point that throwing the phone down gives you. And that's just one example of many, but I want you guys to start thinking about um, what kind of coping skills you're using first and foremost. Are they helping you in the moment? And if they are, is it helping you in the moment because it's a productive, healthy thing to do? Or is it just getting your nervous system down a couple clicks to start feeling better? And maybe it's more of a negative coping skill. And if it's more of a negative coping skill, I want you to lean into your curiosity and into your awareness and try and ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? What has happened? And you might have to jog your memory back a couple days or a week or so back. Something could be lingering from your past that's making you feel the way you do today. And once you identify the trigger or triggers that are making you feel this way, we have an ability to do two things. We have an ability to put a fork in the road and allow yourself to kind of sit with this and make a decision on how you wish to cope differently what positive coping skills you could put in, in its place um, that would actually make you feel better, not only in the moment, but in the long run. And then the second piece is, 
once we've identified the trigger or triggers at hand, then we can go in and actually look at how to work around that. Sometimes it's something that's in our control. Sometimes it's something that's out of our control. Depending on that situation, how engaged we get with that solution-focused mindset. So there's always a couple steps to this when we're going in the positive route. And it's not just to cope and manage. It's to cope and manage and it's to really get underneath to say, I see, this is why I'm feeling that way. How can I compassionately and kindly work through this in a way that it's not hurtful to myself or anyone else around me? Is it in my control? Is it not? Phone a friend, call your therapist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For as many negative coping skills as there are, there are even more positive coping skills. And I guys, I wanna give you guys that hope because when we're stuck in that rut of the negativity, um, it can feel in the moment like that's all we've got. And I just want to encourage you that that's not the truth and that that's those nasty little thoughts that get stuck in our heads sometimes about ourselves, our abilities, and what's happening in our lives at that time. There are many, many, many more positive, helpful, constructive coping skills out there. And the more we all are using them, the better the world can be. Okay, and I, I don't take that lightly. I don't say that lightly. So this is just a friendly little reminder to check in with yourselves. Make sure that the things that you're feeling are taken care of, that you're questioning them, and that we are self-soothing in happy ways. If you need any help with this, reach out to your therapist, call a friend, ask a family member, someone that you care about, someone that you trust, and let's see if we can get this going. As always, thank you for checking in with your wellness, and I'll see you soon.